Hey, this is Rob Onspach, and welcome to another edition of E-Heroes. Now, a lot of you know that I'm a big Disney fan. Now, I wear Disney shirts, I wear Disney hats, I, I talk about Disney in a lot of these episodes, so it's, it's with great honor that I have Lee Cockrell, the former VP of Operations, or Executive VP of Operations for Walt Disney World Resorts with me, and we're going to talk about creating that magic, you know, in your own uh, organization. So welcome, Lee, and, and thanks for being here. Thanks, Rob. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm enjoying your, your your backdrop with all your great books. And, and uh, was was um, what was the inspiration? I mean, because, yeah, I mean, you you were working for Disney for a long time. Did you start writing them when you worked at Disney or after? Well, I wrote a lot at Disney. I wrote a very 10, 15 page document every week for the cast members over the year. Uh, a newsletter that had included safety issues, what's happening this week, uh, recognition for cast members who took good care of the guests and reminding them of what we're supposed to be doing there every day. And uh, so I had a lot of material and uh, now I, I started writing the first book, uh, right as I uh, retired, actually I got permission from Disney to use Disney on the cover and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, I didn't, uh, I always thought I wanted to write a book, but I didn't think I, anybody would buy it. So I eventually figured, well, after working 42 years for Hilton, Marriott and Disney, I must know something. Yeah. And so uh, I started writing about uh, customer service, leadership, management. Uh, I think when you work for a great companies like that, you learn a lot that maybe other people haven't been exposed to and uh, like I wasn't until I was and so sharing that a lot and then especially with a lot of universities a lot of colleges a lot of young people that uh, they would get them some things early in their career that'll help them then, now, is Disney still following a lot of the things that you wrote about oh yeah I mean Disney doesn't you know Disney is really focused on the guest uh, they interviewed profile two million people a year to see what's going on what they like what they don't like uh, and of course people come from all over the world so you, you try to stay on top of that as far as kind of food they need and uh, the rides and uh, yeah Disney's very focused I would say uh, it's been a tough year and uh, but uh, I, I never ever thought that we weren't making decisions based on guest satisfaction. And uh, so we kind of got a little formula for how to do that. And just, I always say people, the way Disney does is we hire them right, we train them right, we treat them right. <laughs> and they take care of the guests because they want to, not because they have to. Yeah. So I, was, I was there in January uh, during COVID. And, uh, you know, Disney has always a contingency for everything. So they have plan A, plan B, you know, this is what you're going to have to do. And I, I found that, you know, I, I was acceptable to wearing masks at Disney because it just felt safe, you know, but there was a lot of people, I guess, with their preconceived notions of what they thought Disney should be doing. And a lot of people were yelling, a lot of people, not, not employees, guests. Yeah. And, and it just, to me, it should be the happiest place on on earth. But I, I think that uh, people people come to the parks and and they have their own agenda. They do, and Disney enforces their policies, so a lot of people got put out. Yeah. <laughs> Has to leave. Yeah. You know, safety is a huge issue, and especially these days, you just cannot afford uh, an outbreak because of uh, not taking care of the right policies or children getting sick. You know, 50% of our guests are kids, and uh, parents don't get too happy when their kids get sick. Yeah. And so there are those kind of people that's across the nation right now. Uh, everybody you know, seems like the dumbest people seem to know more than everybody else. So uh, <laughs> I, I don't uh, know where they get all that. Uh, yeah, mostly they have no facts. They just have some philosophical reason <laughs> they don't want to do it. I, st I spoke to the pharmacy today from uh, my from Blue Cross Blue Shield, and she said, are you taking your medications you're supposed to, right? Uh, I said, honey, let me tell you something. I do what experts tell me to do. 
<laughs> my doc, my I don't try to outguess my our cardiologist or my internist, <laughs> but a lot of people, oh, I don't even know. So it's a it's a strange thing, and, uh, how people behave and react. And, yeah, and and I'm I'm 52. Yeah, I have I have a couple grandkids and professionally as we can. Yeah, and you know, it's just as I get older, I'm thinking, you know, I I'm not I can't do the things I used to do when I was younger. <laughs> you know, it's just it's crazy, but. I'm why looking. Take why take a chance on your life or yeah. your family or your kids? Yeah. Gosh, that's that's for me. It's even bigger issue. If you got children around, you think you'd be even more careful. Yeah. You know, I, I'm looking at your your biography on your website, and um, you know, for, for ten years you had led a team of forty thousand cast members. I can't even imagine that. You know, I, I have my own team of like five six people. <laughs> More than that, I'm going out of my mind. <laughs> well, it's uh, the same old story. You hire the right people and you train them and you hold them accountable and be clear with them what your expectations are. Life works out no matter how many people you got. You know, when you hire great people, you don't have to manage them very much or you, they they want to do the job. Right. When you hire uh, people that are not very good, you end up a lot of time having to spend time with them and coach them and counsel them. And, so hire great people is probably the key. I mean, really take your time on that because then you a bunch of stuff never happens that you have to deal with. So that's a, take, find the big things in your life and do them really well, like hiring. Yeah. You know, I'm just every time though I go to to Disney World, I'm just amazed at how big it is, how how many resorts there are, how many people work there, and and how it runs like clockwork and. And, and, you know, no matter how many times I go there, I always discover something different, something new. And, and for years we went there. I never knew that there were as many golf courses there. I, I, you know, and then we started going to them. And I was like, you know, why don't people talk about this? They're fun. You know, yeah. there's a lot of little surprises. And by the way, a lot of people come and they're only there four or five days. They do miss a lot of things they don't realize are there. It's like going to any big city and you miss Years later, you hear about something you should have seen. <laughs> yeah. So let's let's talk about your your uh, your organization. You know, you you left Disney and then you you started coaching others. Yeah, I mean, uh, I started getting requests uh, even when I was at Disney. I had one fellow who told me, "When you retire, I'd like to I'll put you on a one year retainer to help me with my company." So that got me started and. Uh, then I start getting requests, and when you write, a, when you put a book out with Disney on the cover, you start getting more requests. Mm -hmm. People thought I knew what I was doing, so I got lucky, and uh, so it took off and uh, surprised me. Uh, I've done six or seven hundred programs over the years, and all over the world, and Australia, even Baghdad. I went to Baghdad for the military in 2011 and did 13 seminars for soldiers and State Department. And uh, who knew? I mean, I was going like, wow, <laughs> Australia, South Africa. Uh, it, uh, there's a Disney, uh, there's a lot of people around the world that want to know how Disney does it. And, uh, and I think I got lucky because I was the operator and I can say I actually did it. I wasn't a facilitator of this material. Mm -hmm. uh, I can kind of tell them the truth about the hard decisions. <laughs> and, uh, it's not as magical sometimes for you when you're working there and you have a recession or 9-11 or hurricanes or so they like that and uh, i keep pretty busy with that yeah you know when when uh when i came out with my first book i had no idea you know how it would do how you know what what the reception was and at the time i had i had owned a carpet cleaning business and i had that for almost 20 years so i wrote this book on social media and and, and i just wanted to make it simple you know, that people could understand it and, you know, take 45 minutes and they've, they've understood the concepts and the book took off and it was like, wow. Okay. And so then I wrote another book and that took off and I'm like, okay, this is kind of nice, you know, but it, it, it's, I, I'm still kind of grounded, um, you know, for all the experience that I've had cleaning carpets and helping customers, I've always tried to keep that grounded perception going in and as a coach because you know 
I, I basically can st still consider myself cleaning up after someone else's mess or cleaning up after someone else's, uh, you know, concepts that aren't working. And, and so you're taking the same concepts that worked at Disney and now helping other people to kind of uh, enhance their magic. Yeah, it was a combination. Of, you know, you learn something different in each organization. If you study Hilton, I learned the business, mm -hmm. the technical part of how to do things right, serve and all of that. And then Marriott, I learned how to be a really good manager about controlling costs and hiring. And, and then at Disney, the entertainment. And, and, and of course, uh, at Disney, everything matters because the mm -hmm. guests are mainly paying out of their pocket. They're not on an expense account like in a hotel company. And uh, you got to do it right, I mean, especially with children. You know, parents will not forgive you for uh, not uh, for doing anything that damages their kid, their children. And so we want every little girl to really believe that Cinderella, she met her, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, we uh, we really focus here on keeping that fantasy real, and uh, and uh, it's memorable, no question about it. Yeah. You know, for for me, it was it was. Um... I think it took me a while to understand that, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm more unique than, than what I let on. And uh, I didn't start putting my sarcasm into my books until a couple of years ago. And, uh, but, you know, people read those books and they start laughing and they, they have fun and they call me and then I help them out. And, and a lot of my books before that were very PC, very, you know, neutral in, in, in my thought process because I thought you know I, I just want people to like what I'm doing but now they love what I'm doing because I'm being more authentic and and I think that's kind of what Disney was doing for a long long time but now they brought in these extra I guess it used to be four keys now it's five keys you know they're, they're being a little bit more diversive uh, they're allowing people to be creative with their tattoos and uh, I'm not a big fan of tattoos, but I, I can see that it, it helps uh, make the employee feel more welcome. Yeah, I think they just got to be careful if they don't confuse that inclusiveness with actually the show. Yeah, uh, They're putting on a show and there are characters in the show. I always said, oh, Cinderella didn't have a tattoo on her mouth, <laughs> probably, uh, or Mickey starts smoking because he likes to. Uh, so you got it's a fine balance, yeah. a very fine balance of uh, which people can show their tattoos and piercings, and which you know if you're not in a role, mm -hmm. uh, whatever goofy or <laughs> one of the roles, uh, Minnie or Mickey, yeah. So they're going to have to really pay attention to keeping that balance of the cast feeling good about in the, being individuals and the company keeping the show going that they're so famous for. Yeah. Now, you helped set up Disneyland Paris, right? I did. What's the difference in culture? I mean, because I, I, I know I, I've been I've been overseas. I've been to Italy and, you know, Paris and, and all those places, but I never got to go to Disneyland Paris. But I know the French culture is a, a lot different than American culture. Yeah, and that's a good way to put it. It's not good or bad. It's just different. Yeah. And, you know, every country. I've been to 45 countries now. They're all different. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Americans are not always very comfortable with difference. They like it the way they like it. They think it should be that way around the world, which is, and that's mainly because people don't travel very much to America. Very few right. Americans have a passport. And, uh, but uh, the French culture is different. I mean, it's, uh, they didn't grow up with Disney like we did. They, uh, uh, they have different routines in France. They go to the same place every year for vacation, their country home or their vacation home, or they, they're not used to taking time off. They don't take their kids out of school to go to Disney. They, uh, and uh, serving in, in any uh, store or business in France is very serious. Mm -hmm. I would say you could say professional, but serious. It's like do the transaction, but the so uh, that was part of the culture of getting made to have more fun and to uh, to play these roles and to, but uh, it's like you know we're all like how we grew up. Yeah. <laughs> you don't change that very. You don't change the culture of France or Germany or China. Uh, you got to adapt, and yeah. um, that's happening. That's happened. Yeah. And, uh, 
and it's doing well now. Well, I know the last time I was down at, at Disney, a lot of things were being adapted to our phones, you know, menu yeah. ordering, food ordering, you know, a lot of this stuff, we, we couldn't, we couldn't just walk up to a restaurant and say, this is what I want. We had to order it on our mobile Disney experience app, which, you know, uh, if you have an old phone like me and the battery lasts two hours, um, <laughs> you're, you're kind of out of luck. <laughs> so yeah, the problem, I think, and I, I'm not into doing all that ordering online and doing using my phone to as part of my experience, but, and I probably, uh, I don't really go to places like that. I don't go to restaurants very often that have these uh, iPad menus. And, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a fine game, fine balance of introducing technology and keeping the, the experience uh, one. That's, that's like, yeah, that's good. That's fine. And there's a balance because of the age, young people versus older people. You know, mm -hmm. one of those older people, I could do it, but I don't like to do it. And, <laughs> you know, um, Anna. And uh, so that balance is uh, some people will love it. And I must say, I love having automation to call an Uber or to, and I do order food online for pickup. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I, you know, we use, I think Amazon comes to our house every single day of the week. <laughs> and so, yeah, there's, it's just a little balance thing that you make sure uh, your relationship with the organization you're dealing with is mm -hmm. acceptable. And whether it's personal or whether it's technology, and uh, that's fine. That's a fine line. Okay. Did you have a Did you have a favorite place inside uh, the resort that that you felt more comfortable in? Uh, not so much that, but I enjoyed the, my favorite restaurant was California Grill because I was involved in making that change to it mm -hmm. and convincing Michael Eisner to give us six million dollars to do the conversion. And then after we started, found out we had a million dollar asbestos problem. And so, uh, and that restaurant is fabulous, still is, it does great. Uh, I had hired the chefs and rep manager and all when I was in France and they came with me. And uh, so that's, that's a favorite, the ones when you're personally involved in the development and opening of them. And uh, we like Epcot in the evening, afternoon to go and see the country and have dinner in one of the places and a little drink and watch the fireworks. So. But I have three grandkids, so my uh, I pretty much went where they wanted to go when I went to the park. So mm -hmm. they moved to Orlando when I they were little, like four and five and six. So I, we grew up <laughs> going to the parks together, and of course their tastes changed too. As you, mm -hmm. you know, at first when my granddaughter's with me, we do a lot of uh, girly things and uh, a lot of shopping of pink things. <laughs> and, uh, the boys want to go on the thrill rides and. Uh, but they don't want to go on them when they're young. They grow into them. <laughs> so uh, it was an experience for me taking these kids and going to Buzz Lightyear and trying to beat them in the scoring on the shooting mm -hmm. targets. And uh, so I got a special uh, association with it because I got to experience it with those little kids. And they, they, they taught me about Children's meals should be better. <laughs> the water fountain was not cold. <laughs> All those kinds of things, which I probably wouldn't have found out by myself. But uh, yeah, you go experience your product as a guest, and you find out a lot of things. And it was fun with them. Yeah, yeah, you know, and I think the Pirates of the Caribbean ride is still my favorite. And uh, I introduced my grandson to it, and you know, he's he's in the ride, and he's like, "Is this it?" Isn't there more? Is the is it longer? Yeah. <laughs> like you just destroyed my favorite ride. <laughs> well, they're exposed to a lot of stuff online now, a lot of excitement and animation and, and video. So, yeah. so on on the wall back here, which which is uh, your favorite book? Which which is the one that you spent more time on? Online. Yeah. Well, the first one obviously was harder because I took a couple of years having to deal with Disney lawyers and getting everything. <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, number, yeah, creating magic is it's in 22 languages now around the world. And nice. All four of them are coming out in China this year, and Russia, and uh, so I like I love that book because it obviously was first. And, you know, it's kind of the Disney recipe for how we did things. And the second one, uh, the customer rules. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really taken off because it's fundamental basic ideas you can implement in your business that don't cost anything. Mm 
Right. We're looking for like, how can I do these things? I, I don't have the resources Disney has. And I said, these things, you, it's how you treat your people. It's how you think about the guests. You, I mean, it's, there's so many things you can do that don't cost a thing and make set you, set you apart from your competition. Yeah. And time management, which is my thing. I've been re- teaching time management for 35 years. And uh, so I put it in book form and that's kind of taken off because people are so disorganized. They don't know what they're doing. And they need to get organized because the world is very complicated now. Too much coming at you these days. And uh, then the last one is career magic. And that's about how to overcome the obstacles in your career. They're going to happen whether you like it or not. Oh, yeah. And uh, you just got to have a right attitude about when they happen. It could be your fault they happen. It might not be your fault. But things happen. <laughs> and people who can overcome obstacles are the most successful. They don't uh, you know, bury themselves. With, when they run into the one and we have them every day and that's all we deal with as humans is obstacles every day you know like getting the zoom to work and then getting this work and then your kids uh coming home with a problem or i mean overcoming the obstacles every part of your life is that's why we try to hire people who are good at overcoming obstacles we really focus on that when we hire tell us how you deal with this and that because when you deal with 52 million guests a year, you have a lot of obstacles. You know, for, for me, it was for time management. You know, I, I used to keep a strict schedule and I, and, and I didn't have any room for, for, you know, interruptions. And it just got to the point where I, I became too stressful over this, this, this calendar. <clears throat> yeah. I, I, and then I finally said, you know, what, enough's enough. These are the two things that are highly focused on. And the rest of the day, if I get stuff done, I get stuff done. But uh, yeah. and and I, I became less stressed. I got more stuff done because I wasn't trying to adhere to this <clears throat> to this this darn well, schedule that was killing me. They are the really important things, like yeah. your health, <laughs> <laughs> like your family, and like your business. And then you can go think about other things. But that's what I do. I focus on limited things too. And, and I delegate a lot, and I have experts that I contract out to do work for me. And, and uh, yeah, I agree with you. Uh, a lot, half the stuff in your to-do list, you don't, nobody knows about anyway. So, uh, yeah, I agree. You know, I, <clears throat> I, I like the fact that your, your books are in, in, in many, many languages. And my Rob Versus books are only in one language, and that's sarcasm. And, <laughs> so that either you know people either like it or they don't like it. <laughs> so, <laughs> it works okay in the U.S., not so much in France. <laughs> no, no, and, and, and in fact, uh, one person in Germany bought my book, and, he, and and they're they're like, "Well, you don't find the humor." In it. I'm like, "Well, I'll, but I just give you your money back." <laughs> Most people don't understand American humor. No, and and you know, as I as I said to you before. Uh, before we jumped on, on, you know, we started recording, you know, my, my lifetime goal was always to work for Disney. <laughs> I'm so sarcastic. I think I'd be fired after a few minutes. <laughs> well, you know, I don't know. Some get fired, some get famous. <laughs> but, you know, I, one of the things that I love to do when I'm at Disney is, is not necessarily the rides or what's going on around or even either, even the food it's it's meeting the guests i mean not the guests the, the the cast members you know they all wear the 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 tags with their name and they used to display their cities you know where they're from i don't think they do that anymore i when i was there i didn't see anybody from Is that right? uh, i guess yeah, no. it used to be the city and then it was for college kids they could put their college on there yeah. i don't know what they do now i haven't been over there for a while and, and to me, that was that was a great way to break the ice with a cast member. Oh, I, I see you're from Pennsylvania. I'm from here, and you're, and 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 they would, you, their eyes would just light up, and they would want to talk. That's uh, great. Yeah. I'm surprised they're not doing that anymore. That was great. Yeah. The guests loved it, and so did the cast. So. Yeah. yeah. So you know, I I think when I was when I was there in January, I I, I think a few people were still wearing their old tags. But the majority of them were wearing new tags and it just had their name and I had no idea where they're from. And I, you kind of lost that that uh, uniqueness. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask them about that. I didn't know that had changed. But uh, I have many tags with Ardmore, Oklahoma. 
Never been there. Nope. Uh, you don't need to go there. <laughs> you don't need to go there. <laughs> yeah. You might. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Gonna have some guy, somebody gonna listen to this and they're gonna say, I want you to be there. I'm like, Yeah, yeah, okay. You got to stop there for the holiday inn on the way or something. Who knows? You know, I still my favorite resort at Disney is is, uh, Fort Wilderness. Yeah, it's great. My son used to be the general manager there. Nice, yeah. He was the general manager of Wilderness Lodge and and the campground. Yeah. It's a great place. My brother has a big motor home. They stay there and they love it. Yeah. I mean, the first time I was ever there was in 1985 with my parents and we stayed at the Treehouse Villas. And uh, I half a time when I'm searching on the Disney resort app, <clears throat> the, the the villas never even come up, the, the Treehouse Villas. I guess the, I know that they eliminated some and moved them and did something. Now they're back, but... Yeah, it's, it's, you know, that's the thing about Disney. Everything that they do is ever evolving. And and I think that we as entrepreneurs need to understand how we have to, you know, kind of evolve in our own business. And sometimes the changes that we want to make may not be the best changes. You know, Disney has made a lot of mistakes over the years, but they've kind of course corrected very quickly and, 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 and came back to that idea that, you know, maybe this isn't the best interest of our, of our guests. And, and don't, um, don't fall in love with your ideas. They may not be good. <laughs> yeah. Or, or they're going to be too expensive and, and you don't find out until after it's already kind of <laughs> drained some of your money. A lot of people have trouble backing off of their ideas. That's the problem. Yeah. Be able to really pivot on. I, I, I think one of the, 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 the uh, areas that I like the most though, at Disney is, is not necessarily the, the, the hotels or the amusement uh, parks is it's the uh, downtown Disney or what's called Disney Springs now. And, and that has expanded so many times over the last 20 years. It's just, it's amazing. Oh yeah. It's amazing. It is amazing. Everything you can do there now. Yeah. yeah. And the quality of the restaurants and the shopping. And the, yeah. Yeah. It's great. I mean, they did a fabulous job, and they built enough parking too. So, <laughs> oh, and the and the parking is free for now. It may change in the future, but I doubt it. Yeah, it's um, but you know that they, they they had uh, years ago they had Disney Quest there, and yeah, I think that was one of Disney's failures. Um, they realized that maybe they just don't need to be in the gaming entertainment, you know, field. Um. And and they and they quickly uh, decided, hey, this isn't our game. Right. I think that's right. Yeah, it was an, it was a cool concept. I I went there, I took the kids, and but yeah, um, yeah. I went there too a couple of times as a guest, and uh, yeah, I'd say mayor was a one tripper. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and 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 really, they say, okay, you'll spend all day here. Uh, I think I spent two hours max, and that was it. And I was like. Okay, now what? <laughs> yeah, 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 that's fine. Who knows? It may come back with all the gaming, and somebody may come up with a great invention in gaming, and things come and they go. Yeah. So, how do people get a hold of you? Where do they go? Well, I put everything in one place since I'm old. I might forget where it is. So, <laughs> it's leecockerl.com. And uh, I have everything on there from my books to my speaking to my podcast which is now seven years old we have about 380 episodes on there every tuesday 15 minutes at uh we publish it every tuesday 15 minutes then i have a new cockerel academy which is an online learning system i developed over the pandemic I had nothing better to do and that's on there if people are interested in that and uh, yeah we keep everything there in one spot and you and can order directly. Address is on there. My phone number, my email. So I'm easy to get a hold of. And you can order your books directly from you, or do you order them from Amazon? Or Amazon's probably the best. They're so yeah. quick. It's the same price. They, they, you know, Amazon gets the price down pretty low, yeah. and they deliver like maybe the same day. My wife yeah. ordered 
recently at five or six in the morning. It came at three in the afternoon. So yeah, people ask me, they they'll say, "Hey, can we order? Can we order autographed copies from you?" I said, "Well, you can, but it's going to take weeks. <laughs> you order from Amazon, you get the book tomorrow. <laughs> you probably get free shipping with Amazon." Um, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, do you really need my signature? It's not going to make the book any more valuable. Right. Yeah. I have a little, uh, what do they call them? Those, you can sign it and mail it to them. And take it back off and stick it in the front of the book. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it's, uh, I, I, I just find, I find the, the, the whole Disney, Disney environment, um, you know, to me, it's it's even though I'm 52, and I have grandkids now, and I and I probably go to Disney now twice a year. It's still, you know, one of those things that I, I feel like I'm a kid every time I go there again. And 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 some of my my friends don't understand that. They're like, You're "Going to Disney again?" <laughs> it's like, yeah, but I learned so much. It's not just about the rides. It's not about you know. It's it's the experience that I get from dealing with cast members and 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 food servers and and the whole gamut, you know. Yeah, I'm there to to have fun, but I also learn so much. And yeah, and uh, anything you want there, I mean, you go to the pool and play golf, you can do whatever you want. I mean, there's so many activities that yeah. you never run out of them. No, no, and, and uh, you know, I could go there. I could spend a whole year there. Still, probably not, you know, do everything that there is to do. It is. It's uh, that's the problem. Most people plan twice as much as they're able to do. <laughs> yeah. And see, I, you know, and and I think that's that was our our goal going f forward. The, the first couple times we went to Disney is, and 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 granted, things have changed over the years, and and now they have fast passes. Well, fast passes are kind of on hold for COVID, but when they come back, you know, again we're using technology. <clears throat> and you could reserve your time to come back to a ride. And I thought that was kind of cool. But <clears throat> I think they're going to have to realize that there's going to have to be a system to please people because people don't want to wait in line for two hours to get on a ride. It's the number one problem at Disney. Yeah. Lines. Absolutely. I said, always understand what your number one problem is in your life and then work on it every day. Yeah. <laughs> so, <clears throat> well, that's a big problem. In January, when we went, it wasn't bad because we, you know, it was five minute wait lines for everywhere. I mean, it was just great. Um, I guess everybody was just afraid to go because of COVID. But, you know, last year when we went, you know, they had these fast passes to tell you when to come back. And I'm like, okay, but we're on this side of the park. <laughs> I don't want to have to run up. And back and forth. Yeah. Back and forth. And it's like, by the time eight o'clock came around, I could barely walk. I think I, I I logged 17 miles back and forth running this. I'm like, no, nah, this is too much. No question. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's, uh, you know, one of the things that I, I plan on doing is having an event, some type of training event at, at Disney next year. And, uh, you know, I always wanted to take people down below in the tunnels. Not available right now. So, you know, we'll see. I'm sure they'll go back to that, though, when it's cleared. Yeah. yeah. A big people really like that. Yeah. And and see, that that right there is, is the whole behind-the-scenes magic of what happens at Disney. And I think that if every entrepreneur took that kind of philosophy and said, okay, how can I showcase my behind-the-scenes to my people, to my audience? People would understand, oh, wow, that's what happens. That's what they do. And 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 when when you start to share some of that magic to people, you know, uh, your audience starts to trust you better. Oh, absolutely. They want. To, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. Uh, we really talk about anything people want to talk about, or we take listener questions in our podcast and answer them, no matter what the question is. Really. Yeah. And uh, they like that. That helps us with dealing with whatever the listeners want to talk about and uh, they have questions about all kinds of things mm -hmm. some are but some are disney some are other <laughs> so uh, yeah i agree with you find out what your customer wants and provide it yeah. Yeah. that's the name of the game well this was a great interview i i, I loved it i i'm i'm 
I'm honored that you're here. And, and for all the, the, the listeners, please visit Lee over at LeeCockerell.com. That's L-E-E-C-O-C-K-E-R-E-L-L.com. Buy his books. I mean, they're amazing. And uh, I think you're going to learn a lot, you know, and, and I'm sure there's no sarcasm in his books, but, you know. Yeah. There might be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That you talk about sarcasm is funny. I had to kind of back off of that eventually because uh, I was uh, too good at it. And uh, so anyway, I got my wife trained me to get stuck. So anyway, good. Thank you for having me on. It's great. And uh, take a look at the Cockerel Academy too. You might be find it interesting, the, uh, especially in and I know a lot of parents are making sure their kids that are. 11th or 12th grade in college, look at it too for some ideas. We have one course on there and the 30 things kids need to know before they enter the workforce. And uh, so it's fun. Yeah. And and guys, if you're in Orlando and you see uh, Lee, you know, sit down, have a coffee with him and, and uh, pick his brain. And I'm sure that you guys, you're going to learn so much. And, you know, until then, uh, have a great day and, and uh, or, as they say in Disney, have a magical day. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next episode.